and uh, today's topic is norma lateralis so study of the skull from lateral view you know uh, we study skull from different five views and the uh, norma lateralis it's the lateral view today's topic it's also four other views frontal view which is norma frontalis posterior view is norma occipitalis superior view is norma verticalis inferior view is the norma basalis so it's the five views we study from and today is a normal lateralis. Here is the bones contributed to its formation. This is the bony skeleton for your ease, and you can see how we could see the uh, skull in its lateral view. The various portions which first focus on these bones forming that. This is the number of the bones, like this number three. This is the frontal bone, number one. This is the parietal bone. You can identify the bones over here. It's different labels, but just use the lab, uh, this number over here. It's the number of the bones, like this occipital, number 25. So I identify for you these bones in these colors. It will be easier from taken from uh, good atlas. You see, this is the uh, various bones contributing uh, to the formation of the norma lateralis. Here you could see, focus on the front, see the pointer. This is the green bone, this is the frontal bone. So it is contribution to formation of the normal lateralis. This is the frontal bone, this is the in green. And back to that, this color, a sort of a rust color you say or whatever you say. This, see the pointer below to this green color, right? And up to this, this so cursor is moving. This is labeled as well. This is the parietal bone, parietal bone. You could see it from over here as well. This is the parietal color. Then posteriorly, this move color is the occipital bone. This is the occipital bone. And then here is this bone, this rusted color. This is the your temporal bone with its various parts. Well, parts we'll learn later. Uh, this is the part. This, uh, this is the temporal bone contributing the formation of uh, this norma lateralis, right? With its various portions. And uh, this is very important the sphenoid. This is the sphenoid bone with the reddish color. This contributes the formation of the norma lateralis, right? And uh, this also visible is the vermian or sutural bone. Vermian or sutural bone. Uh, the, this was the bones uh, in the this part of the cranium, which is the neurocranium upper portion. And uh, this part is the viscerocranium. The bones over here from above downwards. This bluish, you could see the pointer, is the lacrimal bone, right? And uh, this small bone in the uh, yellow is the ethmoid. You can see there is labeled bones colored. This is the ethmoid in yellow color. Uh, the screen in the nose portion is a nasal bone, this nasal bone, right? And uh, then uh, this blue bone, you could see blue here, pointer. This is the zygomatic bone, you could see. This is its portion, the rear portion we'll discuss later. And uh, below to that, zygomatic bone, blue color is again this purplish color. This is big maxilla. This is maxilla. Right? And below is this U shaped bone, isolated portion, which is the mandible. Right? So, this various bone, this green small bone is the womer bone. You could see that. Right? So, these are the bones contributing to the formation of the normal lateralis. Enumerated here on the left side in this box with colors, names. And you can identify, I've told you, these are the bones in the norma lateralis. <coughs> and uh, we'll discuss two points over here. Subsequently, tyrion and asterion. This tyrion, see the pointer anteriorly. This is tyrion, yes, here. Yeah. Uh, this is asterion. Uh, this is orbitomeatal plane. You already know about that. This is for used for determining the anatomical position of the cranium uh, where anteriorly the point is the lower margin of the orbital cavity and posteriorly the point is 
upper margin of its external acoustic meters by joining through a horizontal line is achieved which is known as uh, the Frankfurt or orbitometer plane. Now, as we move on, the joints of the skull visible in the normal lateralis is sutures. These are various sutures. These are the, it's all in detail. Especially, you got to know very important ones. This here, this is the your coronal suture. This is the coronal suture. You could see the pointer pragma, which is the meeting point. You learned in the normal verticalis. Of a meeting point of the sagittal suture and the coronal suture. So, this is a coronal suture and posterior this is lambda meeting point of the sagittal and the uh, your lambdoid suture. This is lambda. So, you, so, this is the lambdoid suture right and this big suture is the prieto temporal suture. So, you could see prieto parotid where this is the bone uh, the, and this is the temporal parietal and temporal. This is the parietal bone, this is the temporal. So, this is the parieto temporal suture and posteriorly two important suture which is just the parietal. This is the mastoid part of the temporal bone, this is temporal bone, uh, this is its mastoid part. So, this is the uh, your parieto mastoid suture. See the pointer, this is the parieto mastoid suture. Uh, this again between this and this occipital bone is the parieto occipital suture. This is all this, this is parieto mastoid. This is you can say occipito mastoid. So this is the parieto mastoid. This parieto mastoid. Uh, this is the occipito mastoid. Occipito mastoid. These are the sutures. They unite these three over here, and the form. And these four bones form over here. Um, uh, this form the tineon. We'll discuss in a while what is tineon. This is the thing about uh, that part, and uh, this is the body of the maxilla. You could see this. Sorry, body of the mandible. This is the ramus of the mandible. This is condylar process. You could see the pointer condylar process of the mandible. And this is mental protuberance. Uh, this is the which is complete the mandible, then the maxilla, which contains the infraorbital foramen. Here it is the prominence of the cheek known as the zygomatic bone. Here, this is the nasal bone, right? Even the superciliary arch can be identified here, and uh, also the glabella present between two superciliary arches. So, this is the supra, this is sorry, temporal fossa, and uh, this is the his cap, this uh, orifice is the external acoustic meatus, and here is a temporomandibular joint formed by this condylar process of the maxilla in this, uh, this form the synovial joint, the TM joint, temporomandibular joint. So, these are the various structures present in normal lateralis. So, this is uh, no discussion, brief discussion of the tineon. You see the picture? Interiorly, this oval circle shows the tineon X shaped suture. This the four bones meet. This is the frontal. See the pointer. This is the frontal. This is the parietal. This is the uh, your temporal, and this is the sphenoid. You see the sphenoid pointer. This is the your temporal. This is parietal. This is the frontal. The meat. This is written over here, right? This is written tedium. This I told you its clinical importance. That middle pharyngeal artery. It is lying below that. It is known as the Sylvian point because lateral sulcus of the brain. Lateral sulcus of the brain lies posterior to that lateral surface of the brain. Um, uh, uh, brain. When you will learn brain, you will know what is lateral sulcus. So, uh, it is tedion. Here it lies only thin plate of bone which can rupture in an accident on that side, resulting in extra dural hematoma. Right? So, uh, this is the point. Then another fontanelle is a sphenoidal fontanelle. 
anterolateral foramen, right? This is uh, the site of this there here. You could see from that. This is the anterolateral sphenoidal foramen. This is the site of that. Now, another structure corresponding posteriorly to the terion and terion was anterior and posteriorly is the asterion. This. So, it is a very uh, uh, simple meeting point of this parietal bone and occipital bone and the mastoid bone. See the pointer with these three bones. You can also identify the sutures. This is the parieto temporal suture and these two are already told you this is the this your uh, parieto occipital suture and this is the lamproid suture so so per hole can be made below by behind for posterior fossa of the carry so, so this is site of the mastoid posterolateral fontanel this you can see the posterolateral fontanel these fontanel are if you all study know the membrane structures which close about at one year So, then um, going over here uh, further, we come across two lines, the superior temporal line and inferior temporal line on the normal lateralis. The superior temporal line and inferior temporal line, these fade away as they go backwards. And uh, inferior temporal line uh, continues as the supramestoid crest. This you see the pointer. This is the supramestoid crest. This is you see coming the inferior temporal line is coming that. This is the inferior temporal line. See the pointer. This is inferior temporal line. It pointer. This is inferior temporal line. This bone is frontal. This is parietal. Going downwards and forwards and it continues as the supramastoid crest you could see supramastoid crest here below that is the your this a triangle which is the supramietal triangle i will discuss in a while what is that boundaries of the supramietal triangle so attachments to superior temporal line is attached the temporalis fascia and inferior temporal and uh, temporal line gives attachment to the temporalis muscle. And uh, as we go ahead, this is temporal fossa, we discuss in a while. And uh, this is you first I have talked, so I will discuss. This is the supramiatal triangle over here. So its boundaries. Yes, could see. This is the demarcation of the supramedial triangle. It's boundary superiorly, which is that supramastoid crest, and anteriorly, it is the external acoustic knee it is forming its boundaries. And posteriorly, it's a, an imaginary vertical tangent drawn from superior boundary to inferior boundary, vertical tangent to posterior border of the external acoustic meatus. It forms a supramedial triangle this is the point so a few words about the mastoid antrum so this is the mastoid part of the you see the pointer this is the mastoid part of the temporal bone and this is the mastoid process and uh, the mastoid process is the site deeper of the mastoid antrum and you could see also visibility of this styloid process see you could see the styloid process going downwards forwards and medially downwards forwards and medially this is the styloid process as you could see this is also part of the temporal bone now i want to discuss with you zygomatic arch here you could see this is the zygomatic arch and um, what is formed let me tell you very simple yes we can see in this diagram in front you see what is that bone in blue see the pointer this of course is the zygomatic bone and this bone 
this rusted color is the see the pointer the temporal bone they are giving two processes the zygomatic bone gives the temporal process zygomatic bone giving a process which joins with the temporal bone that is the temporal process temporal process of the zygomatic bone then this temporal uh, bone gives the zygomatic process zygomatic process of the temporal bone these two processes form the zygomatic arch you see the pointer anterior one third by temporal process of the zygomatic bone see the pointer and uh, posterior two third completed by this uh, this temporal bone zygomatic process this is labeled zygomatic process of the temporal bone right so they complete a uh, uh, arch this is zygomatic arch so superior to that is the temporal fossa and inferior to that is the infratemporal fossa it has an upper border and a lower border so this is the completion of the this arch formation and uh, the muscle attached to that is the masseter inferior part of the zygomatic arch and its medial part it gives origin to masseter i show you right now i think save the time this is you see this is masseter muscle this is a muscle of the mastication muscle of the mastication involved in chewing this you see this is attached to the zygomatic bone its inferior zygomatic arch inferior border and its medial surface of the zygomatic arch and uh, this is the masseter so this zygomatic arch and uh, the temporal fossa has a gap right this is the bracket shows the temporal fossa and uh, this is separated by a gap with some structures like that tendon of the temporalis passes through that gap with some other vessel than nerves we we'll learn later so this is the point and this is a gap and uh, the structure corresponding to the medial surface of this uh, normal lateralis is the is a crest which is the i tell you the temporal crest will show you the picture later on this infra temporal crest yes this is the temporal bone on the lateral side and this is the infra temporal crest which shows the boundaries of the temporal fossa below this is the external acoustic meatus already has identified that as you see its margins of the external acoustic meatus and the two bones are involved this is the temporal bone and this this is the tympanic bone and here we have to magnify it just for a little perusal and uh, it's as it is yes you see this whole is external acoustic meatus and this bone this cursor is moving below and anteriorly below and lower part of the posterior border this this is the tympanic bone and above that is the temporal bone these two form the boundaries of the external acoustic meatus so anteriorly inferiorly and lower part of the posterior border forms for the tympanic plate and uh, this supra uh, superiorly and posteriorly postro superior you can say postro superior formed by this temporal bone over here so this is the point no few words about our temporal fossa so this in this picture is marked by the started line this is the temporal fossa which contained in its floor a very important already discussed many times tedion so its boundaries superiorly is the superior temporal line and uh, then is the zygomatic arch laterally and the medial surface is the infratemporal crest and um, 
then this is the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. This is zygomatic bone, this is its uh, frontal process, this is the boundaries. So, its anterior wall contains a zygomatico temporal foramen. This is the zygomatico temporal foramen. This is the anterior wall of the zygomatic bone. I have told you floor. So, this floor inferiorly, floor of the temporal fossa communicates with infratemporal fossa. I will show you the picture So, uh, of the infratemporal fossa as well. Uh, the temporal fish has attached to superior temporal line and uh, also to the inferior temporal line and the area between, small area between these two lines, superior temporal line, inferior temporal line and the area between them. This is the would be a, attachment of the temporal fascia. Let's show you the picture. Here it is, the superior temporal line. See, very good picture. This is the inferior temporal line, and these two the areas two between them is contains attachment of the temporal fascia. Here it is the labeling. This is the steric contains the labeling of the temporal fascia. This is the te fish, temporal fascia. And as we remove the temporal fascia to the floor of the temporal fossa, attach the temporalis muscle. Here you could see. And as we clench our teeth, this we can feel the masseter and the temporalis muscle. These two are amongst the four muscles of the mastication. Muscles of the mastication involved in uh, chewing the food and talking, etc. So, this is attachment as well and uh, we are very close to finishing it. So, this first of all, uh, let us have a look, just a look at this diagram. Uh, you could see this was the temporal fossa, this, and this is the right C picture, this is the temporal fossa. And this is the infratemporal fossa. So, two fossae temporal fossa, infratemporal fossa, and this is the zygomatic arch. Through this arch, below to that, these two fossa communicate temporal and infratemporal. This is, this is the communication. So, between these two, demarcation between temporal fossa and infratemporal fossa is the zygomatic arch. Right? So, as we move to A, picture A. This is the pterygopalatine fossa. Here you could see pterygopalatine fossa. This infratemporal fossa and pterygopalatine fossa are separate topics we'll discuss later. We have to become familiar as these are parts of the normal lateralis. You could see visibility of the that, right? So these the, we could see only four bones over here. You're already familiar with that. This bone, this maxilla. Uh, this is the bluish, the palatine bone. And this yellowish type is the sphenoidal bone over here. Again, here it's same color of the bone. And uh, this is uh, the fourth uh, bone is also the zygomatic. And I want to identify for you just few terminology. This is the parts of the sphenoid bones. This is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. This is the infratemporal crest, corresponds to the medial aspect of the zygomatic arch. This is zygomatic arch laterally and there is a gap and then medially is the infratemporal crest. Then is the lateral plate of the pterygoid process. This is the lateral plate. This is the pterygoid hemolus. This is temporal bone, right? This is, which is just, you know, styloid process told you. A thin needle like process going downwards, forwards, and medially. This is the mandibular fossa. This is the external acoustic meatus. This is the articular tubercle. I told, uh, want to tell you that the posterior part, this is the zygomatic bone removed over here, also the mandible removed over here. Mandible removed, zygomatic arch removed. Post, this is the posterior, you see the pointer, posterior part of the zygomatic bone, it has an anterior tubercle and the posterior tubercle and the area between these two tubercles is the, uh, this uh, uh, articular tubercle.
so i repeat i thought i was in the speed this is the articulate buccal this you could see this it is situated between two roots two roots as the posterior part of the zygomatic bone forms anterior root and posterior root please listen carefully the posterior part of the zygomatic bone forms two roots anterior and posterior roots and the area between them is the articular tubercle this is the thing right and anteriorly as the zygomatic bone is removed zygomatic uh, arch is removed the, the anterior move to a picture as you could see here this is the anterior part of the upper border anterior part this is known as the uh, um, jugal point this is jugal point this part anterior part of the zygomatic arch its upper border anteriorly is known as a jugal point and uh, this uh, zygomatic arch is also known as the zygoma zygomatic arch known as zygoma so this is a few terminology in, in the last uh, this uh, structures the terigo maxillary fissure just you memorize these names listen to these names become familiar these names terigo maxillary fissure inferior orbital fissure infratemporal surface of the maxilla this is the alveolar foramina this is the tuberosity of the maxilla just wanted to say the few words about that so this was a study of the tempo lats normal lateralis these were the attachments temporal muscle temporalis this is masseter this is the i told you fascia temporal fascia so let's quickly review that uh, slides these are the bones contributing to normal lateralis this is an immediated you can identify this is bones in color so the colors in the bones and uh, this is the again this orbitometrial plane shown again and this is the tedium right this is the sutures these are the names of the all the sutures i've told you uh, this is the uh, important sutures and result of the sutures what we get very important tedium anteriorly and asterion posteriorly this tedium is very important clinically because posterior to that what lies anterior branch of the middle meningeal artery which is responsible for in case of bleeding extradural hematoma then this is sides of the fontanel this is the anterolateral fontanel the site of the tedium and this is the posterolateral fontanel site of the asterium this, these fontanels are membranous structures present during infancy present in the neonate and the infant yes so asterion this is the mastoid for the posterolateral fontanel so the two lines superior temporal line and inferior temporal line attachments of told you we need to know here that is the temporal fossa its boundaries and the attachments of told you this is the temporal fossa this is uh, shown by this dotted lines it's labeled over here this is see the pointer above temporal fossa this is this is floor this various boundaries and attachments very important temporalis muscle i've told you supra meatal triangle continuation of this inferior temporal line here is the supra mastoid crest contributes to the formation of the supra meatal triangle here and uh, this is supra meatal triangle this which i've discussed with you all the boundaries are written over here supra mastoid crest and anteriorly external acoustic meatus and this is a vertical tangent to posterior border of external acoustic meatus this is the supra meatal triangle it's a reference point then the bone other this contribution of the uh, temporal bone temporal bone here it's a sequimus part of the temporal bone uh, this is the stylet process right uh, this is the mastoid part of the temporal bone mastoid part also contain this mastoid process the nipple like projection 
down the mastoid part of the temporal bone and it contains a mastoid antrum. So this is the uh, point about this. The clinical um, um, importance is the stadion is situated about 4 cm above this zygomatic or it's about 4 cm above and about 2.5 cm below this behind this. Told you this uh, formation of the zygomatic arch by these two bones, the zygomatic and temporal and thus external acoustic meatus its formation with this temporal bone and tympanic bone. So these are the two fossae, the supra, there's the temporal fossa and then infratemporal fossa, which is the um, communicating over here. This is the infratemporal fossa exposed by the zygomatic arch removal and mandible. So this border, you can see the dotted line is the your infratemporal fossa. We'll study later on. This is the infratemporal fossa. You'll have to uh, become familiar in the study of the norma lateralis. This infratemporal fossa. Here we can see this is the temporal fossa and this is the infratemporal fossa. CP figure communicating under the zygomatic arch. And this is the blue arrow, pterygopalatine fossa. Pterygopalatine fossa. It's a separate topic. So again, you see attachments to the superior temporal line, inferior temporal line, the area between them is attached to this temporal fascia and to the floor of the temporal fossa is attached this uh, temporalis muscle for a superior temporal line and the floor of the, uh, of the temporal fossa is the temporalis. This is masseter attached to the inferior border and, um, and the anterior aspect of the zygomatic arch this so this is a uh, assignment for you to, to complete it shown in the picture which you have uh, discussed with me what are they like so you have to label them and uh, that is your assignment one two three so all bones which you are encountered over here is all foramina this is mandible this is the this is the circle Versus point, what is that? And um, it's that, which suture is that, which suture is that. You have to, if you complete it, complete it on your own, you would be uh, mastering your norma neutralis. Thank you very much.